new exploration tools including the FSS scanner has been included into the game and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to go out and use it for yourself to discover new objects. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. In the recent patch, new exploration tools were added and today we're going to have a quick look at them. First I'm going to show you the tools, how they're used and then at the end of the video I'm just quickly going to go over the key bindings in case you need help with that. But first, before we start, we need to switch our hot mode. Right now we are in what's called combat mode and we need to switch over to analysis mode. There's a key binding for that, we'll talk about that later. You switch over, you get a blue hot in the... Um, in the main part here and we get vertical lines. You can see here I've already bound my discovery scatter and a detailed surface scatter. I should say the discovery scatter is now a um, default module on all ships, meaning no need to fit them. So if you can't find them in the outfit hanger, that is why. So the first thing we do is we can open up the FSS scanner. You can see I have this red um, red spectrogram here. That's because I haven't honked the system. We haven't established a orbital plane yet. We do that by honking the system with the, detailed, with the uh, discovery scatter, of course. Boom, orbital plane established, 14 bodies found. Now, if we now open the FSS scanner with the same key binding, we can now see we get some various, um, we get various small um, like squiggles down here on our spectrogram. And also notice here down in the um, lower right hand corner, it says what type of signal is in the different locations. So if I go down here, you can see here, this is a transit signal source. This is a, another signal source. Here we have high metal content world. So we can go to these. These are probably icy bodies, it looks like. We have some uh, some icy rocky worlds here as well. And if we had anything in this area, it would be Earth-like. So we have water worlds and gas giants up in the larger part of the spectrum here. Okay. We can also see here we have some, like, um, some uh, spikes kind of moving around on the... Uh, um, on the hut in the middle, we can also see some indications of some spikes down here in um, uh, on the spectrum scanner. First of all, um, we can move this around and we have a clear view of the sky. We can also see these blobs of light. The blobs of light is where there is something, but we don't know yet what it is. So, either you could find a blob and say, I want to know what that is, and you could then begin to tune your scanner until it becomes a solid circle. That's one way to go for it. Um, alternatively, what you could do is, let's say you want to find a specific object. Let's say that I want to find something um, that is a ice, a, a rocky ice world. That's pretty much all we have here. Um, and that should be some maybe here. Let's see if I can find one. Oh, yeah, here's a good example. You can see here that in the small over the spectrogram, we have two peaks at the top, one peak at the middle, and then two peaks at the bottom. Those correspond to the peaks that you would see in the circles. So the two peaks at the top means that it's two peaks in the outer circle. One peak in the middle, one peak in the middle circle, circle, and two peaks at the bottom means two peaks on the inner circle. And they will kind of point towards the direction where that is. So if I were going here, going close to this, um, I can now see here again, two, two, three. There's a lot of these, that's why they're kind of stacked up um, on top of each other. So if you have multiple signals, it can be a little difficult. But in our case, let's go back to our, our icy rock, rocky planets. We found one there. So we can start by, um, by zooming in on this. And in this case, there seems to be multiple. And I can now, already now, I can see, if we look at the scanners here, I can see that to my right right now, I have a rocky ice world because I have 2, 1, 2. Whereas I know that 2, 2, 1, that's an ice body. So that means to my left, I have an ice body. To my right, I have a rocky world, or a rocky ice uh, world. So let's see if that's true. Let's try to go over to that. And indeed, that was the, uh, the rocky ice world. Let's zoom in on it. And boom. And this is equivalent to a detailed surface scan. I now have the same information. You can see it out here in the right side of the screen. I have the same information as it would from a detailed surface scan in the old one. So no need to actually fly to the planet. We can go out, and we now get that with the uh, with the orbit as well. Let's go over to this one and see if we actually were uh, ID this right. It said it was an ice world, an ice body. It seems like it was. And lo and behold, there it is. And you can just continue doing this until you have discovered. Um, I mean, once you get uh, get the hang of it, it is pretty quick. So you can sit here and and what is this? This is a signal, maybe. 
Oh, there we go. It was a signal. So we can scan in and we can see in this case it was a degraded emission. So not really uh, something we were uh, we were interested in. Um, we can again try with this one just to do a one last example here. So here's also an, another good example here. Um, you can see here I have now tuned in on a ice body. I have multiple um, I have multiple signals here, but we can see that the one that fits the signal that I tuned into they are in white where the others are in gray. So I now know that if I follow this signal here. I should find, if I tune this correctly, there we go, I should now find a, uh, a ice body, and indeed I did. That's pretty much all there is to it, I mean again signal sources are all down here in this area, they call two, they said two one, so there we go, there we go, there's one there. So if you just set your scanner down here if you're looking for signal sources, another degraded emission, and we can begin to look around the night sky to find um, Oh, there's another one to fight more signal sources. Another, another degraded emission. So not too lucky with my signal sources today. But anyway, that is uh, that is that scanner and how that works and all those small peaks. Now let's go and have a look at mapping. Okay, so let's say that I found this very, very interesting. Uh, what is this? This is an ice world here that I think. Oh, I gotta go and explore this. I want to go and figure out if there's anything interesting on the surface of this planet. So as you can see, I've already moved in range. And I'm now going to go and I'm going to fire off my surface scanner here. That's going to bring up this new probe UI. We can see out here on the right hand side we have our current ammo loaded. It is an, basically an auto loader. That means you can um, you can fire off as many as you want. You don't you can have more than just three in space at the same time. Um, but basically it just re reloads over time. We can also see here we have an efficiency target uh, below that. Um, Six probes, it says. So that means if we can get this thing scanned if with six probes or less, we get a bonus for our discovery because we map this efficiently. In the uh, in the lower left-hand corner, we have a percentage. When that thing reaches uh, ninety percent, it will automatically jump up to hundred. So you only need to map ninety percent of a planet. Okay. Then, of course, we have here in front of us we have the planet itself, and this is basically our aiming reticle where we're going to fire off our probes and we can slingshot these around the planets. This bar here in the middle, if we fire that, that means we will hit it right on the horizon. Okay, so if I were to fire six probes at this, what I would probably do is I would say I'm going to fire one right here at the center. I'm going to fire that probe off. Then one of the horizon out here, kind of like a cube because it's six sides. So I try to make like a six-sided cube around this with probes. And we see I'm firing these right at these markers here. Um... And now you can see it hits there, that's the first one that hit. Took a scatter big area, that one should hit right on the on the side there. There we go, and that should hit right there on the other side. And there you go. And you can see with us, those three probes, we already mapped 78% of the planet. So we can keep going here, we can set one as, uh, towards there. And we can send one there. And there we go, we got just five probes. And our surface scan is complete. Okay, let's uh, jump out of uh, of this mode here. And now we should, if we go to contacts, it says no contacts in range. Is it done in contacts? Okay, I do believe it's actually here in navigation maybe. Um, but if there were anything on the planet of interest, um, do we have the planet targeted? We do. Then it would probably show up here under the planet. So if they say there were geysers or there were some sites on it that were interesting, we would then be able to see them here. So gone are the days where you have to run over a planet and try to eyeball it and spot things for yourself. Um, this will now be shown up if you just map it. And these probes that I'm firing off, these are not ammo. These recharge, you have infinite probes with you. So there's no need to synthesize anything. They're just there. You always have these with you. Let's have a look at the key bindings for all this. The first thing you need to set is the mode on the mode switch. Oh, there we go. All the way at the bottom here, we have switch hot mode. That was the one that switches you between combat mode and analysis mode. That is the orange versus the blue uh, UI. So that you can set here. Next up, we need to scroll the way down to the bottom. Here we have everything related to the uh, FSS scanner here. And the most interesting ones are, of course, enter FSS mode. And further down the list somewhere, we also have exit FSS mode. For some reason, those are two separate ones. They were at least. Ah, there was leave FSS mode. So 
So these are, for some reason, two separate key bindings that are not next to each other. Don't really get why. Um, but you can you can, um, you can set it to the same keys. You have joy 25 here, joy 25 here. So you can set it to the same key binding. So enter and exit is kind of the same thing. Then you need to set your camera pitch. You can either set it to, uh, if you use a HOTUS, you can set it to an axis. You can set it to uh, down here. Um, here you can set the, uh, if, if you want to use the mouse, you can use your mouse axis for it instead. Um, I believe you could also set, a, yeah, you could set a dead zone here. And you can also do like a, if you want to use, use uh, key bindings for it, you can also set like uh, keys that would then incrementally um, remove or pitch your camera. Exactly the same thing with your here. Zoom in on the target. That was when you saw when I was in the FSS scanner mode, when I zoomed in on the target, obviously. And zoom out. Go back out if you want to go back out and, uh, and look at things again. Step zoom in is a more gradual uh, zoom you can set. I don't really use it. Um, on the tuning again here, you can set a um, you can set an axis if you use a joystick. Same thing as before. You can set your dead zones, but you can also set uh, normal keyboard presses if you want to do this more manually using just uh, key bindings. Um, and then yeah, as I said, there's all the mouse uh, settings down here, um, and there's also target current uh, signal, which can also be very helpful. Um, I find that just using the uh, select target ahead also uh, seems to work. But you could also set a, a, a target here, so I could go and say, okay, I want that, uh, that button there to be my target current signal source, or signal. So that's all about the FSS scanner. Finally, we just need the detailed surface scanner here. There's not that much in here. Um, this is, of course, activated through the fire groups. There's no enter or exit, or there is an exit, but there's no enter. Um, uh, entering is just used when you fire off and the firing group, but that's also the key binding that you will use to fire off the probe. So whatever firing group it is set to is the one you use to both enter and fire off the probes. Again, here you can set your um, your mouse axis. You can set how you control it, exactly the same before. You have yaw and we have pitch, and we can also control our field of view if we want to um, uh, to do that. And again, same uh, same thing. You can set to an axis with a dead zone, or you can set it to individual key presses. So that is it. I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, I really hope you would consider to go down and hit the subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. Also, drop the video a like. And also next time, I will see you guys in space.